for Stephen Gordy, a.k.a. Red This is not a dance move. I broke my leg. But, uh, what's up, everybody? What's up, Mikey Simon? Oh, we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to Chris Clinton in a okay. second. Don't don't you worry about that. Don't you worry about that. Um, yo, man, thank you for being here. Hey, thank you for having me. Two thousand eleven. That's actually when Party Rock Anthem came out. Uh huh. And so, I remembered being in a little town uh, in northern Laos, and we were in a bar. And I say bar from the standpoint of this this town didn't even have electricity. Mm. So for five hours a night, they put a generator on. But when Party Rock Anthem came on. Everyone knew the lyrics, everyone was dancing. And the lights came on. And the lights were on, and people were having a good time, and we were dancing, and I was like, oh, I know this guy, which didn't really help me with the girls, nobody really believed me. But still, it was fun to see that universal language with music. Ah. And what I wanted to start to ask you, you've been a lot of places. Mm. Was there one place that really sticks out where you're like, man, this is crazy, we're doing a show here? <laughs> You know, it's all a blur. <laughs> I will say that, crazy enough, but Canada has the craziest party animals. And growing up here in, in LA, a native uh, Pacific Palisades, you grew up, you know, you just hear some kind of jokes about Canadians and, and that, and that's really it, you know, a boot and the thing. And, and that's all you get, it, 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 you know? And then I went there and they are like cowboys and Calgary and cowgirls and, and they're drinking and they're crazy and they're like 18, 19, you know, there's the, I think the drinking age is, is 18 there. And Canada, and it's cold up in the mountains like, and they still don't care. They're, they're in the shorts and they're partying and they're dressed like whatever we're dressed like, they're dressed like that and no sleeve, sleeveless shirts. And I'm saying, this, this ain't, you know, Venice Beach now. You know. So Canada, Canada's your big. No. You made it all the way to Canada. We were in the jackets, you know, cold. And they were like, party rock. And so Canada was like, that blew my mind that they were, you know, like crazier than we were almost. We. Luckily, we performed there first at, at, as LMFAO because we learned something from Canadians and we took that party vibe and then were even crazier and better partiers in other places because of the Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> Any Canadians here tonight? All right, yeah. there you go. Thank you guys yeah. for showing the way. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna put, so we're, we're so this is you on stage here. We're, we're talking a little bit of music up front, and then we're gonna get to some music stuff. <laughs> Look how drunk. <laughs> Look, yeah. Look like focus. Okay. Very focused here. <laughs> oh, that's a TV show. That's not even. Okay. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> well, I think. I think. I get all the blur again, right? Yeah. No. I mean, that's a real drink. <laughs> Perfect. Well, let, let's do this, because what I want to really talk about is kind of the juicy stuff with travel. Mm. So you guys, you all see, um, you know, Red Food this way. We see him this way. We know him, you know, in the public limelight. Um, I was lucky enough to grow up with you. Yeah. Um, in the Palisades. Um, and I, I know you as, as a different guy. I know you as the guy who played tennis, the guy who played soccer. Woo! Right? I know this guy who, you know, was, was always outgoing and fun and, and you know, just a fun and outgoing. Oh, yeah. No. But... Um, <laughs> I was much shyer, though, I think, a, l a little bit. I mean, not with well, you, but with the public, I don't know. Well, I, I think, and we're going to get to that, because, yeah. you know, you shared a story with me that really, how travel really, so I asked, I asked, you know, Fu to do the show and talk about travel and some of the things that really uh, impacted his life. And what he started realizing is that some of these things really had a huge impact, not only on your life, but your career. Yeah. So let's paint a quick picture here. 88, you're on a club soccer team with, with Chris Clinton, who... I don't know where he is. There he is, Chris there Clinton. There he is, Chris Clinton, baby. So you guys right here, you go to Sweden. Right. <laughs> Look at this. Chris, hey, hey. Now, you're on a club soccer team that goes to Sweden. Woo! Somehow, I was left off this team. I think I was an alternate, was, under the alternate, yeah. under the alternate. No one got injured. No one got injured. So I was ready. Go. I stayed yeah. home, packed for weeks. However, so you guys go to Sweden. 
88. Uh, and my, by the way, I asked Chris yeah. for a picture of the whole team. Yeah. This is what he sent me. <laughs> well, because he needs to get his. I know, I know, but that's a whole other story. Uh, Chris, you look great. Uh, shout out to Chris Clay, we love you. Um, but when you're there, you guys are actually, you're, you're there to live with a, they have you live with a host family. Yeah. Right? It's, right. And you connect with this guy, Bjorn. That's right. From Sweden. From Sweden. Yes. And also, quick story also, your mom's family is from Finland and Sweden too. Yeah, that's right. So, so you and Bjorn connect, then the next summer his mom and he come out here to visit. Yes. You and your mom go back the next summer and you guys kind of, you become friends, hang out. Then as you, you know, start to move through your teenage years, you start getting into tennis more. That's right, baby. Bjorn comes back out here. That's right. Lives with, I think, you and your dad at your dad's house in Bel Air. You guys play tennis every day. Every you guys day. are tennis hustlers. You're just in it. Making yeah. money. Making money with tennis balls. All these old fools. Right. <laughs> at that point in your life, you're like, I'm going to be a pro tennis player. Yeah. Or you're in tennis is your life. You go 16 or so years old, you decide, I'm going to move to Sweden. Right? Yeah. yeah so yeah, you yeah. move to Sweden. We'll put this up. So you moved to Sweden. This is kind of like a whole hey. collection of people through. This is Bjorn just through the years. Bjorn's parents, but friend in Sweden. We're gonna hold on this for a second because what happened in Sweden was you went there to play tennis. Right. You went right. there because I'm gonna, you know, be this guy playing tennis. And a couple weeks after being there, you broke your wrist. Yeah. Snowboarding. Snowboarding. <laughs> Only going about five miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. Boom. Broke it. And oh, this was, and I couldn't play tennis. So the first thing as I said is I said, well, I want to get some turntables, you know, <laughs> and, and I want to get a sampler, and I want to. I've always had this dream of making music. Like, how does it? How do you make it? How do you sam How do you play the keyboard and, and, and record it? So I got a four track, uh, two turntables, and a microphone. Uh, <laughs> so, and, yeah. But what I was gonna say is okay. So you come from a music family. Right? Let's, let's talk. You come from a musical family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. Gordy. Yeah. You know, music and tennis have always been kind of your thing. Right. Sports, yeah. But this time in Sweden, meeting these people, yeah. what happened to you to step in? Because when you moved, and this is what I want to start talking about, right. is Sweden actually allowed you to have this confidence and be this new person yeah. that music took it to the next level. And you actually started your music career in Sweden. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know why? Sweden allowed me to be a new me because there was no history. No one knew me. Mm. So it was a chance to say, to step into Sweden and say, this is who I am. Mm. Um, and there was no, I had no bullies anymore. I had no, so you felt bullied here, you felt, oh yeah, no. oh my God, and, 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 and the Palisades and the, and the Pali High, I mean the, the <laughs> Pacific Palisades. No, they used to call me Annie, with the app, with the Annie, with the freckles, the connect the dots. I'm half black, half white, so they would call me Oreo and Zebra. What's your favorite cookie? And I said, Oreo. <laughs> so, so, but in Sweden, right? they didn't know that stuff. But not only, they did, they know, not only did they not know that, they wanted you to rap. You could speak English. Yes. They, they treated me like they were in awe because I was just American. You know how the girls, when they see a you know, French-speaking person over here, they're like, ooh, la la, you're so beautiful, you're speaking the, you know, so that's how they, they felt like, like I, I was a special, I was, they treated me special because I just spoke better English than them. And they were all in, you know, learning English in school. It was their, you know, German and English was their like languages, their second language, I think. And they were just like, you speak so fast with this rap. What is this rap? And you know, Will I Am and, and Ahmad and I went to school with Will I Am and they used to make fun of me, you know, like oh, you can't rap and this and that. But in Sweden I was the best rapper that ever came around. And I said, Yeah, and in Sweden. Yeah, and the girls, they love loved me because of my accent. I had an accent. You know? And uh, so he, he totally gave me this confidence that I never realized until talking with you just two weeks ago when we started talking, chatting about this whole stuff. And I, I was like, if I never traveled to Sweden, mm -hmm. I never would have met these people that treated me this way, that gave me a new confidence, and I was a new me. It was part of me, but it had been sheltered uh, because I had been attacked, you know, in the teenage years, as all kids do, in their hometown. You know, because you make one mistake, you do one, I got, you know, I lost one fight. And now, and now I'm loose jaw to Jones, you know, you know, and the whole, you know, but they didn't know that, you know, and they didn't know I was loose jaw. Which is funny, actually, in Sweden, 
which is funny because you actually said in Sweden it was like, no, I mean, there was the one kid who kind of uh, started trouble, but nobody even liked him. Yeah. And everyone else was like, it was a different in, kind in, of energy. In, yeah, in, in, in LA, if you were the tough kid, you were like the coolest kid. If you were, you know, but in Sweden, they really frowned upon that. They were, you know, they drink tea and, and, <laughs> and fighting is wrong. And, you know, and they, they drink a lot of beer. The kids drink beer. They don't do a lot of drugs in the Sweden. It's bad. You know, like, that's crazy. But they will drink some elephant <laughs> beer and some Pritz Blah and, and, you know, and, at 15 years old. You know, But it was just, it was a whole different culture. It was... It was a it was a community of friends, but it was just everything was different, and it's socialist. It's socialistic, so everybody has at least healthcare. Mm. Uh, they live in an apartment, uh, a cable TV. I mean, everybody from the lowest, you know, it, it, there's like no low class. It's like middle class to you know, on, on up. And 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 people are, I don't know. They're just it's different. And so did you the, think about staying in Sweden the whole time? Did yeah. you think about doing like your whole high yeah. school years there? Yeah, yeah, I mean when I came, you know, it was weird. It was like I think it was time to go back. I knew I had to go back. And you do this weird thing where I feel like I almost picked a fight with Bjorn a little bit like because it's mm. so difficult to leave and you're going to miss the whole thing. So it was almost I felt when I left I was like Get out of this oh, shit, you know, uh, which is which was weird to me. And me and Bjorn are still like best friends. Uh, twenty years later, I hadn't seen him for twenty years, and I went back for an LMFAO show, and we performed. And I brought him on stage. Yeah. I went back to the old uh, place where I, uh, I I lived, and um, you know he has two kids now. And all that Wait, stuff. so you tell me? I want to tell this. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen was telling me a story. Um, with that when you were living there, yeah. you would take the train. Yeah. And and Maria, right? Yeah. Maria, yeah. Oh, Maria yeah. would get off the train, but then when you were back there, and well, I would pass I this, this girl. Right. I had a crush on this girl, Maria. Um, and Sarah. Not Sarah. Love you, Maria is the only girl that I told my girlfriend about. In this story, in this story. Golly, always get into my stuff. My mom. Uh, no, Sarah was that was that was another one. That, that, that was a yeah. Was Sarah too. Sarah, Sarah Maria too. wasn't even a girlfriend. And I was just talking more than the fact that you ran. I had a crush on right. my girl Maria, and she was in our you know crew, and, and everybody you know all the guys you know they liked her, and she would date everybody but me. And she, what the hell? And uh, but you know I still liked her, you know Maria. And I used to go on the train, I used to see her at the, at the second to last stop to where I was going on the train. I used to see, uh, uh, I used to look and say, oh, there's Maria there. And sometimes she'd be there and I'd wave, hey, <laughs> going by. Sometimes I, I'd get off the train, you know, well, this is not your stop. Well, you know, I wanted to get a, uh, a bite to eat. And how you doing? You know, and then I would walk the rest of the way. And so 20 years later, I'm driving with Bjorn back to the neighborhood where we hung out. And we're, 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 we're coming up on this, this second to last train stop. And I said, hey, this is where I used to um, see that girl Maria. Remember that? I used to, and he's like, yeah, I remember that. And I said, man, that would be crazy, man, if she was right there. And we looked, and she was there. <laughs> <laughs> she was there. And she doesn't even know I'm in town. And well, maybe, you know, I was thinking, maybe she knew. She had, and she's holding a kid. And I said, does she still live there? He goes, yes, but she doesn't live. I mean, she her parents live there, but she got married and she lives on the other side of Sweden. And, and she comes back, you know, sometimes she happened to be back with the kid. But when you travel, that that stuff happens. Oh, and I think when you're calling that out, was a moment. And, that and was so a I wanted to bring moment. that up. Um, yeah. But what I want to go to, we're going to go back to music here for a second. Because as you start now, Rapping in Sweden, mm. and you start writing. They pushed me on stage, by the they way. Pushed you on stage. I didn't want to do it. They were like, "No," and I was like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> you know, I'm I'm loose Joe Jones. You know. That. <laughs> and so yeah. wait, wait, so you do this birthday rap for your dad, and you start mm -hmm. doing kind of Christmas carol things, and you make a little mm -hmm. video, and mm -hmm. I'm expressing uh, myself. You're expressing this yourself music to to my dad because I, I had a fight with my dad. That's why I left, mm -hmm. and I was able to sit and make a birthday rap for him, and I put in the lyrics some stuff about how he taught me how to how to uh, coil my serve like a Coil. That was my, oh, that was my first second. Oh, yeah. listen. <laughs> this is just part of it, friend. That was my lyrics back then. Yeah, coil this is like just part coil. of it. Coil, yeah. <laughs> 
had a happy, very exciting birthday. The birthday raps to get up and dance. Shake the birthday, the man. It's the birthday raps to get up and dance. Shake the birthday, the man. Ask me to get up and do up. I'm a lyrical genius, no need to rehearse See, suckers always try to disrespect me But I keep on going strong, it doesn't affect me I'm a locomotive, and my heart is the engine I'm gonna derail, in other words, I'm gonna fail Be anything that I wanna be Have a number one hit, or playing tennis and parry That's what you taught me then when I was young To never give up until the match was done Okay, Ooh. I stopped it right there so we can stop on tennis that Whoa, that flow, I had that flow You did, you did But the thing I also want to bring up is that when you came back and you had this newfound confidence, and you were musically kind of on a different level. People like Will I Am yeah. and Ahmad yeah. wanted to work with you. They, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you were the guy. I'm from Europe now. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're Europe, dude. I'm European. You're European. But I came back with a skill of how to produce. No one knew they could just rap and the rap in the circle, but I could actually record the the vocals. I could make the beats, and now everybody wanted to be my friend. Up in Pally High. <laughs> Up in this mug now. That's what happened. You guys did, you and Ahmad did back in the day. That's yeah, like I did Ahmad's me. album. Uh, um, you know, uh, dropped out of, of Palace. And I remember this teacher, though. I got this English teacher. And, and he said, uh, he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I, I, I want to rap. I, I want to be, hip, you know, hip hop. And he goes, uh, you know, you're wasting your time. You know, you can't do that. You can't make no money in that. You know, you got to finish high school and all this stuff. And I, I went to Temescal, so I, I, I got, not kicked out, but I had to go to continuation. I just couldn't focus, you know, and I was writing my raps and the history and stuff, uh, trying to write my own history. And, um, and um, I, I got a deal with Ahmad, and I got a publishing deal, and I was making $50,000 a year with this contract. And I remember going back into the school with a copy of the check to the teacher, and just BAM! <laughs> And I just then I said, now that's what I'm talking about, music, baby. And I, and I left. And um, so I, I don't know how that relates to travel, but I did travel back to that school. You kind of went back to it, it all, again. Yeah. It all stems back from Sweden. But it does stem back it, from It starts Sweden. stems back from Sweden. Yeah. All right, so yeah. we're going to come back to music in a second. I paused on this here, and we're going to go tennis. Because I, I know, again, your first love is tennis. Yeah. And you've played all over the world. Yes. Right? So yeah, you yeah. played with Richard Branson on oh, the yeah. Necker Cup. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Even though you guys weren't in Necker this year because of the hurricane. Yeah, her, yeah. But Bahamas. Bahamas. First time, too. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It was amazing. Bahamas love, was incredible. You loved the Bahamas. The, the swimming with the pigs. Oh, you guys did the swimming with the pigs. It was a pit. I mean, you and Jasmine did the swimming with the pigs. Oh, my God. Yeah, really? no, not you, not the pig. Not swimming you with the pigs. Swimming with the So anyone who doesn't know, share, share really quick. With, so. Yeah, well, Jasmine, she's... She basically is like your travel agent extraordinaire. Well, yeah, a girlfriend, and, and she, you know, turned into a road manager, and she's booking all the stuff. And um, she, you know, we went to uh, the Bahamas, and she was always talking about these pigs. You know, we gotta see the pigs. You gotta see the pigs. It's, you know, swimming with the pigs, swimming with the pigs. And you know, I was like, okay, cool. You know, but I'm thinking tennis, and I'm gonna go out there. You know, and um, and she's talking about, okay, we gotta go see these pigs. And I said, okay, we gotta go see the pigs. And it's about two days. And we're about to leave, and she's like, I, I, I want to see the pigs. And I just got this thing, like, she is not letting me leave the Bahamas without seeing these pigs. And so we went, and we made it part of the, woke up early in the morning, and, and took the boat out there. Oh, we flew in a little scary, you know, propeller thing, and uh, landed on the thing, and then we, and we saw the pigs. And they're like swimming in the water. Swimming in the water like dogs. Uh, we, we make them sit. They are sitting for the food. Which one was trying to bite my booty? Like serious. And the little cute ones that were taking pictures. And it just, it really changed my life. Because I learned that pigs are just like dogs. And they swim, they sit. But you don't know that. You know, it was beautiful, but it was. But she is a, a, an animal uh, planet uh, in one in the brain, and so everywhere we go, we're gonna have to we we'll have to see some kind of exotic or normal animals. All right, so you go. I mean, again, you you love you play tennis around the world. Yeah. But I want to bring up you did you know make the amazing effort at U.S. Open. Yeah. Right. Yeah. U.S. Open qualities. I, I and after out. you get you know you get injured, maybe you get healed, you come back, maybe try again. I'm coming back. You know, Jack, Jack Sock is the number one. Um, uh, um, uh, American tennis player right now. He's number eight in the world, and he just won this doubles tournament up in the in the desert. 
and we hung out with him after uh, at, at his house, and you know, played some beer pong, and we won. Me, me and Jeb, you know, Jeb and beat him and his girlfriend. Uh, I just gotta say that because I'm competitive, obviously. <laughs> and but he, he was he had heard he had heard about my forehand, and he's because he has like the best forehand in, in tennis, like it's you know really heavy topspin. And he's like, no, but I've heard about yours. And I said, well, you did. <laughs> you know, he's like, I've seen video, and I was like, dang, I'm just traveling. It's traveling. It's, it's, and so he's like, yo, let's play a doubles tournament. And I didn't know if he was serious, you know. Uh, but he, apparently he's working on en enrolling us into a professional devil. And he's like, no, let's not play. Let's win a tournament. You know, because I've seen you play. We can do it. And, okay. I, and so, so you're going to come at it now with. I'm going to come out right, that's a good and, and play right. with Jack Sock, me. All right. All right well, I, well, you yeah. heard it here first. Hopefully this is live somewhere yeah. on the internet yeah. and everyone yeah. already knows in, you're playing. In Los Cabos. In, in, there you in, go. In I also want to bring this picture up because this is you and Bjorn. Yeah. And we're going back to Sweden because, again, it's not where you go, it's the people you meet. And I love the fact that you went there not only to change your life and opened you up and gave you the confidence for music, but the fact that you guys are still friends. Yeah. And even though it took yeah. you years to hang out, but the 20. fact that you still have that connection, and it's probably like you're still hanging out like you were 13 or 14. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. He's the, one of the funniest guys. I got kind of my humor yeah. from Bjorn. So if I never went to Sweden, he had this humor, funny, broken English, you know, and uh, he's a great guy, very competitive, and he beat me in soccer and ping pong, and I'm still upset about that. But, <laughs> but And we compete, and he still beats me in tennis. And he's a tennis pro. Yeah. He's a tennis pro, so he, he followed tennis. And you and, did this and I, music? And, and I did this, this, this music. Yeah, too. So you guys rented this amazing villa in, in Marbella. Yeah. Uh, as a way kind of like to have a home base to do uh, shows all over the all over Europe, right? Right, right. Um, but you had said to me that this experience in Spain, you're vegan, you've been vegan already at that time, but really allowed you to cook a lot together. Half of the crew started cooking and stuff like that. And it, w it was amazing because, you know, I have a kitchen at home in LA, never cooked. Chipotle, you know, this, that, you know. But when you're traveling, for some reason, you get the kitchen there and you're staying there for a couple weeks, you're like, we're just gonna go to the grocery store and buy stuff. So we did all that stuff. It was amazing, but there were some people in the crew that were still eating McDonald's. They wouldn't even eat the local food, fast food. They, was, they wanted the McDonald's. That they were happy when they saw a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Like, <laughs> oh my God, you know, and it was, and we were watching the Netflix documentaries, the what the hells and the, and the stuff, and they refused to watch that. They wanted to kind of do the same thing that they did in LA. They just wanted to go out to the clubs, party, 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 meet other travelers, which is cool. It's their journey. Uh, but Jasmine and I just had a different journey, and it was more about cooking and, um, you know, taking, going to the local place to, you know, play some sports and, um, and with the dogs and working out outside and uh, and it, I realized that when I left Marbella, I didn't want to live in the city anymore. And I used to not like the wilderness because my dad has a place in Bel Air, and I used to be like, "You can't walk anywhere. There's nobody around." <laughs> and I like, you know, wanted to be in the city all the time. And Interesting that, that again. Let's look at the two travel experiences. Sweden, yes, moves you into music, introduces you to all these people. Spain, cooking, hanging, hanging there, realizing that you don't want to be in West Hollywood anymore. Yeah. So what does travel mean to you? Travel means growing. Um, you, 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 you have to see something new. You, you have to grow. You, you can't grow in the same, you know, it's like being a little plant. You, you, eventually you got to get out of that pot and you gotta move to a bigger, so you can let your roots spread out and, and the tree can grow. But as long as you stay in that one pot, you can only be so big. Mm. Um, or things are gonna break and crack and you're gonna crack and get crazy. And travel has taken the edge off, you know, and you're thrusted into a new environment where you're forced to survive, you're forced to learn the language. And I grew as a person, as a human being, because people do treat you different and when they do, they may, point out a, a quality in you that, that you have that you didn't even know. Because th they're thankful for maybe it's the English you speak or, uh, you know, I mean, you just meet so many people. And you're, and you're more open, too, when you travel, to meeting more people. If you're closed and you're like, this is my place and 
that's a foreigner, that's a foreigner, you know. But when you, you're the foreigner, right. you know, and not the band, I know some of y'all. <laughs> but when, when you're the tourist, then you're that asshole that's, that's walking around with the map and asking people, you know, excuse me, do you know where, you know, blah, blah, blah is, or, and you, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're naive, you're childlike, it's new.